Hello, so this is the next video, really short here, that we're going to just wrap up everything that we've been talking about in 2.1 conditional statements, okay? Um, and really, we're going to hit all of these objectives and focus on what happens if statements are true, okay? And that brings us to the only topic that we're going to talk about in this video, and it is qualities of a good definition, okay? Because we know there's definitions out there that might not be that great. So what really makes a good definition, right? A few things, especially in geometry. So it needs to include clear and defined words. And, that, and, and like the opposite of that, avoid, you know, words that aren't clearly defined, you know, like these, almost, sort of large you know we need clearly precise like what is large you know what does almost mean so it needs to be super precise and clear um, good definitions are reversible and in geometry terms that means that we are able to write a biconditional statement so go back flip through your notes make sure you remember what biconditional statements mean okay and we can only write biconditional statements um, when the converse and the conditional statement are true. So when those two things are true, we can write a biconditional statement. Remember, a biconditional statement, that's the if and only if statements, okay? We can write that if it's a good definition. For some reason, if I can't write that biconditional statement, if I have something that's false, that means it's not a good definition and I'd be able to write a counter example. Remember, it's like a counter argument. If you can only find one time that something is false, we can prove it wrong and say that it is a counter example and it would not be a good definition. Okay, so let's take a look at these examples. So determine if the following definitions are good definitions. If they are, then write that biconditional, that true biconditional. If it's not, then I'd be able to prove it wrong with a counterexample. So here is this first example. A straight angle is an angle that measures 180 degrees. So it's precise, right? It includes an exact measurement. It doesn't just say if it um, measures a large degree, you know, it's exact, 180 degrees. Is that a true statement? It is true, right? We know by definition, a straight angle measures 180 degrees. Now we can write the biconditional statement. This biconditional, remember, we're going to use these phrases in here. So we're going to include something about a straight angle that measures 180 degrees. And what that biconditional is going to look like is this. An angle is a straight angle. Here's that phrase, if and only if. That's what makes this a biconditional. If and only if. It measures 180 degrees. Okay? Straight angles have to have 180 degrees. That's how I know I can write this biconditional. And that this is a good definition. So here's another example. A square is a figure with four right angles. So is this a good definition? So that is true, right? That is valid. A square is a figure with four right angles. But am I able to write a biconditional about this? And I'm, I'm not, oh no, you can see the counterexample. <laughs> and I'm not able to, and I want us to think about um, why. And I want us to think about why by writing one of, by writing a converse or a conditional statement. And we can say a figure has four right angles. Think about it in a biconditional. If and only if. It is a square. That would be the biconditional. A figure has four right angles if and only if it is a square. Now, is that even a true statement? Right? We know that's false because we know that a rectangle, okay, a rectangle could have four right angles. Okay? So sometimes in order to figure these out, go ahead and write that biconditional. Here's my biconditional. Write that down and think about it. Can I come up with a counterexample for that biconditional? And in this case, we could, right? That counterexample is that a rectangle has four right angles. Okay, so it's not true on both sides if we rewrite it. So we're going to take these good definitions and apply them 
to the geometry terms that we've been using. So here is a new definition for perpendicular lines if we need it. Um, perpendicular lines, the definition, um, it says if two lines intersect at a 90 degree angle, then it's what we call perpendicular, okay? And we use that notation, it's like an upside down T, to say is perpendicular to. So we wanna make sure we know that that's what perpendicular lines mean. And we're gonna use this good definition to answer questions about this diagram, okay? So use the definition above to determine whether each statement below is true. Okay, so the first thing says, line AC is perpendicular to line BD. Now we can say this is a true statement, and I can say it's true because it is marked. My diagram here is marked that I have created a 90 degree angle, and if two lines intersect at a 90 degree angle, I can say they're perpendicular lines. Okay, so that's true. Um, B says angle AEB and angle CEB are a linear pair. So let's go ahead and find those angles. AEB and angle CEB are a linear pair. Now we know a linear pair are supplementary angles that um, add up to 180 degrees, which, look, which is true, okay, because I have another marked, that same marked right angle. Um, linear pair share a common side, and their opposite sides form opposite rays, okay? So we can say that this is true, again, because it's marked. We need that angle measure to be marked right here. In order for me to be confident, it is a 90-degree angle. Sure, it looks like it is, but I can't assume, okay? And here is C. It says, and I'm going to trace over it, ray EA. Here's ray EA and ray EB are opposite rays. True or false? That's going to be false, right? Because of definition, so false, um, we could say C definition. Um, we know def by definition, opposite rays form straight lines. Notice the purple that I just highlighted, they're going in opposite directions and not on the same line. Okay, so that is why it is false. So this is just how we're going to take these good definitions that are provided for us in geometry and be able to make true or false value statements about diagrams, okay? You guys are gonna try some practice on this. You guys rock. Let me know if you have questions. Awesome job.